Welcome back. Um, now we pay tribute to one of our very own, Pearl Shangwe. She passed away at the age of 35 this Tuesday. The seasoned broadcaster was found dead in her home by neighbors. And of course, you know, she will be remembered for her voice and her bubbly personality. At the time of her passing, Pearl worked as a newsreader on Metro FM's drive time show, The Touchdown, alongside the legendary Tibo Touch. She was also a TV host for talk show Daily Teta on SABC One. Now, since the news of her passing, tributes have been pouring in, and many remember her for her soothing voice and her bubbling personality. Her career kicked off back in 2010 when she worked for youth radio station YFM as an entertainment reporter alongside youth pioneer and DJ Mr. Mo Flavor uh, for over two years. Well, before uh, we speak about our colleague, let's take a look at her body of work. I'm a prayer warrior in Governor's Toga City, Umbeli Nangi. I'm going to be a little bit of 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 a of escapism. So as we of a little bit of a little bit of especially on our mental health. There is a demand from school, a demand from MC Benzini, even demands from our social circles where they expect to get a lot of our time and, of course, expect us to be present. October gay Mental Health Awareness Month and as a form of escapism. We've seen many studies, uh, you know, being done about some of the benefits of music. How have you experienced umkulo mko jengenle lanje yo kume ingenza ako and just focus on something else entirely? Yeah, there she was um, speaking to us about a really difficult discussion that is mental health, and she was she, she was essentially that 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 personality that got on a platform and used it to speak directly to people's hearts. Well, joining me in studio today, let's welcome SABC journalist, Mr. Spiwe Ngoani, um, who co-presented Morning Live with the gorgeous late Pearl Shongwe, and uh, DJ Mo Flavor, who worked closely with Pearl from YFM all the way up to Metro FM. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, thank, thank you for having us. Yeah. Yeah, for having us. Um, Mo, I'm going to start with you. Mm. Uh, the news. What happened? How did you hear and what did that feel like? It was actually strange because I feel like I was one of the last people to find out within the immediate circle of, you know, Pearl's colleagues and friends, etc. Um, I found out later in that afternoon. I just had one of those days and um, and in the middle of a meeting, actually, um, I saw my WhatsApps just blowing up and I thought, OK. And, and then I saw people saying Pearl, Pearl, Pearl in every message and I actually thought that Maybe something had happened on air mm. uh, that afternoon because I think it was around 6.30 when I found out. And, and eventually I called one of my colleagues, uh, DJ Jaws, and he kind of then you know, sort of broke the news. And still I was in disbelief um, because it is truly unbelievable. It's, uh, it's one of those things, I mean, even as you did your intro, it's still like, wow, I never thought I'd be sitting here listening to an intro like that. Mm. Mm. So, um, yeah, really just shocking to say the very least. Everyone talks about... Um her rise, you mm. know, how hard this woman worked, yeah. how brave she was, um, how intentional she was as a broadcaster. Um, where were you when you found out and what were the first thoughts? I mean, when you started to think about who Pearl Shangwe was and what she contributed to the media landscape, what were your initial thoughts? You know, Nalidi, it felt, it felt so weird because I was on air on a sister channel on SABC One when um, somebody just texted me and asked me if it is true that Pearl Shonge has died, I was like, you know what, you know, people kill people. I thought it was just fake news, it's just one of those. And uh, I wanted to concentrate on my show. And uh, after, after my show, I called this person and uh, asked them where they got that information. And then when I got onto Twitter, I saw Pearl trending. I was like, hi, boy, guys, what's happening? Mm. And then I asked my boss, my, well, my, my former boss at Morning Live, and uh, she did confirm that they've already spoken to the family that it is indeed true. It felt so weird because just on Friday, uh, Friday morning, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we had just chatted uh, with her and uh, just decided on a catch-up 
a, a, a catch-up session next week, and I guess that will never happen. Yeah. Um, th th there's something to be said about um, when you have broadcasters in the country that not only represent the broader public, right? They are, you know, she wasn't larger than life. She was relatable. Mm. She was a person. Mm. She wasn't a superstar. She was a person and yes. everyone could relate to that and her ethic. There's something to be said about that quality broadcast. And I really mm. want to talk a little bit about that mm. Mm. because that's what she's left us with, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the relatability and the access, that mm. was her power. Yeah. Uh, you talk about relatability, small things like the fact that she was incredibly multilingual. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what do they say? Polyglot. Polyglot, mm. yes. Um, <laughs> and that is, that is a very good quality in mm. broadcasting to have because it means, you know, no matter who sits in front of you or no matter who you're broadcasting to, you can yeah. actually connect with them. Mm. Um, she could sit in a room with scientists, um, as you did. She could sit in a room with uh, guys, Gokoneng. She could sit in a room with guys like me, her friends, etc. She could relate to so many different yeah. people. And that's a quality that is um, very important in broadcasting. Having worked with her for so many years, that's the one thing that really just always stood out, you know? Um, the fact that she could make anybody laugh mm. um, and she could relate to so many different things. She would speak a lot about like wanting to go to the Midlands in, in Natal yes. and then, you know, the next minute we're having Maguinha. So, you know, all these <laughs> interesting <laughs> juxtapositions, but it's just a reflection of just how dynamic she was. And um, yeah. yeah, she was yeah, incredible. And, yeah, and uh, speaking of relatability, you know, it'll take you two minutes to know Pearl. And within that two minutes, you will feel like you've known her forever. Mm. Mm. Because yeah, she exuded that uh, this thing that you know, meet up people are people mm. after all. Mm. Because people, some, some other people don't actually know that meet up people are people. So she, you know, she exuded that confidence that you can just walk into her, run into her, and then have a in a, in a meaningful conversation mm. with her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do need to have a little bit of a difficult discussion here in the sense that when we found out of her death, she died alone yeah. in her apartment. And, I, I, you know, we can, we can make all sorts of assumptions about what happened there, and I really don't want to go into that because that would be disrespectful of her. Sure. But we do need to talk about the fact that as media practitioners, we go through a lot. We're alone a lot. Yeah. We're frustrated a lot. A lot is expected of us. And there's very little safe places to go. Am I wrong there? Yeah, you're quite right. You're quite right. And there's one tweet that um, she, she tweeted, I think it was sometime last year, mm. and as a freelancer, because she was a freelancer, that you know, freelancers are berated for being all over the place. Yet when the gigs don't come, nobody says anything about it. Mm. So it just goes to show um, how much of uh, you know, a dark corner that freelancers are, mm. especially in the media space, because the media space is very, very brutal especially if you are a freelancer. And uh, yeah, she, she, she did mention uh, something along the lines of, uh, you know, freelancers um, are not really respected in some, in some disciplines and in some respects. And um, yeah, it really was surreal how she, she phrased it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I just think um, it's important for us to understand that it's difficult to be in the space where you have to be at times larger than life and be almost perfect. And in everything you do, you've got to be, you know, at, th at the next level. And then on the one side, you've also got to deal with the realities of being a human being mm -hmm. with whatever personal struggles you have that sometimes aren't even career related, yeah, yeah. to be quite honest. And um, it's the constant sort of battle. And how you manage that depends on your support structure, the people around you. Um, I find, you know, just from doing and having done a lot of radio shows with her, we speak a lot about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind it was to make people aware that we all go through something. Sure. And I think that's the bottom line. We all go through something, whether you're a media personality or whatever. Um, but I think it's important to really just sort of sometimes take it back to basics and reflect on the importance of constantly being around people. Yeah. And not just people who are in your line of work, mm. just anybody mm. that you feel you gravitate towards, you know? So yeah, that's, um, that's the kind of stuff we've spoken about a lot. She's been very vocal about that stuff as well um, on the many shows we've done. Yeah, let's, let's have some fun though, because um, what I'm hearing a lot and I'm going over social media, whether it be the general public or media practitioners, the stories that are told about Pearl Shangwa are fabulous, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, give me a memory. 
Give me a memory where you think about her, you think this, this girl, come on, what on earth was she? <laughs> You know, Weekend Live né, is a show that really focuses on, you know, the, the lighter stuff. Mm. We interview artists, uh, DJs, uh, painters. So we normally have music guests, music artists in studio. So we just dance the morning away. And then she told me that, I Simpi, when are you a washing machine? You know, <laughs> I can't dance, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a dancer inside at heart. On the inside. But on the inside, I'm a dancer. You know, a washing machine is so vigorous on the inside, but it's static. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy uh, is a very young dancer, man. You are such a washing machine. <laughs> Because she would get onto the stage with the artist and then I mean, I'll just stand there next to the camera guys because oh, I don't want to yeah. be seen there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and she could dance. I mean. yeah. She could so, dance so a So that story. already upstages you. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what's, what's one for you, a wild one, where you're every like, oh, you, Pearl, um, oh, every Pearl. Every time Kaza Chiefs and Orlando Pirates play, Thank I'm, you. I, I know that Monday yeah, yeah, yeah. is going to be a showdown. <laughs> uh, but she was a massive Orlando Pirates supporter and I'm a Kaza Chiefs supporter. Yeah. Mm. So I'm, I'm thinking now that, you know, this coming Monday morning, would have been Ning of course look at the chiefs the whole show. You know? Um, and you know she had this incredible laugh. It was it was you know um, infectious. It was just that laugh that pulls you in. Mm. Um, mm. And there was no moment that was too heavy um, and no moment that didn't need a bit of laughter. So I think that's just one of the classic um, moments that I remember from her yeah. amongst mm. many. Yeah. I've seen so many young women posting her on social media. Yeah. Young women, and I, I found that very particularly special, right? There were so many young women that posted and thought, she's really? She's gone? Yeah. You know? Yeah. What do you think she represented to young women in the country? Um, I think she really encouraged and inspired women to sort of discover their sense of purpose. Mm. She climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, mm. summited Mount Kilimanjaro mm. for the benefit of young girls. Mm. You know, uh, she said something very profound on her last day of Morning Life because she left Morning Life, I think, 20, 2020, at the beginning of uh, COVID-19, yeah. She said, you know, our successes are not our own, mm. but our successes are for the benefit of those who benefit from our own success. I'm not sure if you get that. Yeah, so that was that very, very profound. And yeah, she represented uh, the fact that everybody needs to discover a sense of purpose. We are here mm. on Earth for a certain purpose. You might not have discovered it now, maybe in the afterlife, but everybody is here for a certain purpose. Yeah. Yeah, I think a sense of drive and um, her ability to just go for it, you know? Mm. Um, she's done many different things. Mm. Um, I remember even her having a short stint in, I think it was a cameo role, to be fair, yeah. uh, on one of the, the popular uh, drama series on TV. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, she was just like, yo, I was on set with Cobrizi and whatever. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. you know, the point is, you know, her, her <coughs> ability to be able to dabble in so many different things and mm. explore her full potential. And often, you know, I think a lot of young women look up to that, the, the sense of saying, you know what, if you want to go and do it and you f feel your heart belongs there, mm. amen, go for it. And I think that's yeah. exactly, yeah. you know, one of the reasons um, that a lot of young p uh, women were just really about her vibe, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna miss some, you're gonna miss her in the studio without a doubt. Yo, I mean, mm. I met Pearl yo, over ten years ago. You know, mm. um, I had an entertainment segment on my radio show um, back at Y, um, and uh, you know, she was just a, a two-minute segment. You know, just gossip news and whatever. And you know, what she did with her career, you know, beyond that is just an absolute marvel. You know, she came in, she did it, and that was that was her thing. You know, and nobody can deny that. You know, she she gave her everything and whatever she did. So, yeah. I'm I'm honored to have met her. I'm honored to have been a part of her life, and she has helped me shine. I think we often overlook that as people who work within teams, right? That right, right. Your, your strength is not necessarily your own ability, but the sure. ability of the people you work with. Her ability helped me shine, um, and her eloquence in in everything she did is yeah. something that was able to carry me as well. Mm. Oh, guys, thank you so much for coming in. I think that this was the perfect way to pay tribute to a young woman who hopefully was able to show um, other young women across the country that anything is possible. Work hard. And uh, if you do leave us, you will be missed. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Mo Flavor, Mr. Spiwe and Nguana as well. Uh, I'll be back again next week, Sunday, right here on Media and Society. Have yourselves a fabulous day.